This canoe holds a tremendous amount of historical value for the Jalbert family. This is the original canoe to Willard Jalbert Sr. It is now owned by his great grandson, Captain Ian Sawyer. And Greg Jalbert has offered uh, information on a Facebook page called Forgotten Main Photos or something similar to that, that was shared with me by Captain Ian Sawyer. And I'm just gonna read a clip of that and show you a few pictures of that canoe in action. So Willard Jalbert Sr. Uh, rose to legendary status in the Allagash region as the old guy. He started running the Allagash River alongside his uncle, Jean Baptiste Jalbert, aboard a horse-drawn towboat ferrying supplies to distant farms and lumber camps. In October 1960, the old guy, along with his uncle Willard Jalbert Jr., Dave Jackson, and Dana Shaw, guided Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas's party from Telos Lake, 100 miles north to Allagash Village. Justice William O. Douglas wanted to spend his last night on this particular trip on the St. John River, 30 miles beyond Allagash Village, to survey the site proposed for a hydro dam project that would have flooded most of the Allagash and the St. John Rivers. After this trip, William O. Douglas returned to Washington, D.C., and he was one of the instrumental public figures helping successfully lobby for the preservation of the, of the Allagash River and how we enjoy it to this day. So yes, this canoe has a lot of history uh, and sentimental value to the Jalbert family. So with a canoe project like this, it doesn't come without having to do a lot of work. And uh, this canoe definitely requires uh, quite a bit of work. It's going to be a lengthy project. It's going to take me through winter and hopefully I'm, I'm hoping to have it done by the spring. I do have a full-time job, so I'm not always able to work on this full-time. So it's going to be in my spare time and that's going to be okay with the family just as long as it's done right. So um, looking at the, this is the stern end of the boat and obviously we have some rot. This is typical of most wood canvas canoes. In this case, this is a fiberglass skin canoe but it's a cedar rib canoe. These out whales uh, are rotted out and that's only telling me that that stem is also going to have to be repaired. I don't even need to inspect that further. It's going to require, this end is going to have to be opened up and repaired and rebuilt. The same holds true for the bow. So here's a look at the bow. Obviously you can see some out whale and some in whale damage. Stem is also going to re require some repairs, probably a four inch cut. The rest of the stem is in really good condition from what I can see. The deck is cracked. The grain is kind of askew at an angle. So I'm going to try and uh, source some material. I think I have some where I can straighten out the grain so it's facing uh, forward aft and uh, not provide a different uh, perspective from when you're seated in the canoe. Kind of gives you a perspective that the canoe is kind of not level. And uh, so I'm going to straighten out that grain. With a wood canvas canoe, you can always expect the ribs, rib tops to be somewhat rotted or damaged. So I don't have um, a, a good perspective right now on, on how many of these are damaged. You'll know more when you take the out whale off. It can be uh, deceiving at this point. Here's a rotted section here that has been treated uh, with some type of wood hardener product. Basically, we're gonna improve this. The ribs, as I have previously mentioned, I have 30 cracked ribs, 15 cracked half ribs. These are two and a quarter inches. The half ribs are one inch wide. It's gonna require a lot of steam bending and a lot of material. The planking seems to be in decent enough condition right now. I'll know more when the skin is taken off and I'm going to have to be careful about taking off that skin. It is attached uh, based on the age of this canoe, most likely with polyester resin. So it's going to require a heat gun treatment to remove the entire fiberglass skin. And then I'll be able to evaluate the condition of the planking. The planking appears, like I said, to be decent enough right now. However, where the cracked ribs have occurred, I am most certain that some planking has also been badly damaged. So most of the damaged ribs occur at both the bow and the stern as, as well as the half ribs. Uh, so it's taken some hard knocks. This canoe has mostly been used or primarily used on the Allagash River. So that's a difficult river to operate a motor on. So you gotta be a skilled uh, 
person in order to operate a canoe and you really have to know how to read that river and exactly know where to go. Um, so uh, based on the history of this canoe, that's particularly what it was used for. And um, over the years, it's taken some bumps and bruises. We're gonna fix all of that. So the, I have a carrying handle that's in great shape. Uh, the bow quarter thwart, the center thwart, the stern quarter thwart, and then the seating brackets are all in very good shape and uh, they'll be uh, refinished, restored. The in whales, out whales will be most likely replaced and the interior is going to be stripped, chemically stripped, sanded, and then cleaned up with TSP. And then a new skin will be applied. It has been requested that fiberglass be reapplied. I'm going to use a heavy cloth on this particular canoe. Uh, still researching uh, the particular type of resin that the owner would like to use. Um, they mentioned a new product that I'm not particularly familiar with but uh, I, I need to learn more about that product. It's called the Hawk product, and it can be mixed particularly with uh, West Systems Epoxy. <clears throat> uh, West Systems Epoxy is what I'm currently familiar with mostly. I've used US Composites, I've used Raka. Um, however, I haven't used Hawk, so I'm gonna, uh, I gotta study up on that and see how that product actually works. If there's any amine blush with it, I'm not sure. So, yeah, it's going to be a lengthy project and it's going to take me all through winter and I hope to have it done by spring. I do have a full-time job, so I do this on the side. And uh, what is important to me, though, is how important this canoe is from a sentimental value to the family, from a traditional perspective to how this canoe has served and, and, and who it carried. Um, but the family is extremely excited about restoring this canoe back to its true elegance. And uh, th those are the types of projects that really motivate me. Um, I've done other canoes <coughs> where uh, the, the owner needed to make a decision on whether buying a new canoe or restoring the canoe that really uh, meant something to them. Uh, people have a strong connection to their canoes. And it's true with this particular canoe too. The, the strong connection here is that uh, it's a real traditional family and these things are extremely important to them and uh, that's what excites me in this particular project and, and as well as past projects where the canoe actually means something to somebody. That, me that means something and uh, that, that's a motivator in itself, especially when you're working with your hands, you're, you're thinking a lot, you're, you're uh, improving the condition aesthetically, structurally. And then you're also uh, creating solutions along the way. And uh, it's, it's just a great uh, place to be in the shop when, for me personally when I do these projects. It, it's, it really allows me to decompress and think and work with my hands, work with my mind, and uh, create a, a product that is pleasing to the owner in the end. So. Traditionally, you know, when I, when I have a canoe restoration project, it's kind of, for me personally, I like to break it up into four phases. So, and it's always typically a series of four uh, parts to each canoe restoration series. This is a much larger canoe and it's gonna take a lot more time, but it's still gonna be a four part series, I believe, just based on the steps required. And um, so, they're going to be spaced a little further apart than in the past with other projects and you know especially now that it's only October I probably won't start working on this for another couple weeks because I have some canoe trips that I'd like to get in you know try and capture some of the fall foliage with some new equipment that I have that will provide a different video perspective um, which is new to me and um, I haven't had much paddling time at all this summer and, and uh, I need to get out there anyway so probably a couple weeks I'm going to start the disassembly, uh, evaluate the material that needs to get ordered for this particular canoe, and then uh, get to work. So thank you all uh, for the, the kind comments and the, and the positive feedback that I've received on the other restoration projects. It really means a lot to me. And uh, you know, if you're going to do this type of work, it, you know, it's, it's not for a pat on the back or anything else, but you do need some type of motivation. And uh, 
My motivation is peace of mind being down here and working. Like I said, I really enjoy that. But then the positive feedback where it's actually helping somebody, like I, I receive a lot of comments like that, like, hey, I really like how you did that. And, and that means something too. Uh, that means a lot actually. So if I can help anybody in any which way by demonstrating what I'm doing to restore a canoe, then that's all worthwhile. So. I am now close to uh, approaching 1,200 subscribers and I never thought I'd even get past 50. So thank you all for showing an interest in my channel and, and what I uh, enjoy doing here. And I, and I hope to continue to create this content down the road. And so thank you for tuning in. Thank you for providing that positive feedback, showing an interest. And uh, I hope to continue to create this content for as long as I'm capable. So. Thank you very much and uh, stay tuned for this series. It's uh, just a short ways away. Thank you.